I was walking through my local toy store for no reason specifically, and then I found this. It looked like a Spinosaurus, but it was missing the sail. And then I saw the name on it, Baryonyx. Now this looked like no Baryonyx I've seen before. The arms were surely too small and mouth too stumpy. But then I thought, what if I'm wrong? Did I know less about the Baryonyx than I thought? So it got me thinking, what did the Baryonyx really look like? Now to understand what the Baryonyx looked like, we need some context. So let's go back to when it was first discovered, all the way back in 1983. By amateur British paleontologist, William Walker in Surrey. When Walker was excavating a clay pit about 30 miles south of London, he came across an incredible discovery, a large claw bone surrounded by other fossilized materials. With some of his friends, they uncovered a number of other fossils, which led to 70% of the dinosaur's remains being uncovered. The Baryonyx has gone down in history as one of the first carnivorous dinosaurs ever to have been found in England, and one of the most important findings in paleontological history. Researchers were able to gain a great deal of information about the Spinosaurid family from just this one specimen. The species was then named after Walker in honour of his findings, leading it to be called Baryonyx Walkeri. The popularity of the Baryonyx has seen consistent growth throughout the years thanks to its name being spread throughout the internet. But nothing has solidified its place in pop culture until it was featured in 2018's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the first big screen appearance it's pretty much ever had. Well, outside of Rudy from Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, but that doesn't really count. But something wasn't right. The mouth looked more like that of a crocodilian, it had stumpy arms and was 20% larger than the real-life counterpart. In reality, the average size for the real Baryonyx stands at 9 feet tall, with a length of 31 feet. With its mass weighing approximately 2 tons, this slick creature roamed the Earth 125 to 130 million years ago in the early stages of the Cretaceous period. The Baryonyx actually has a lot in common with the world-renowned Spinosaurus, as it is indeed a distant ancestor, alongside Succomimus and Carcharodontosaurus. They both have massive 14-inch sides that would have hooked onto unsuspecting prey swimming in the water. Like bears, Baryonyx would have spent a lot of its time by the river hunting fish, and this animal was very well adapted for it, solidified by the fossilized remains of prehistoric fish that have been found within the specimen's stomach. In fact, the name Baryonyx is Greek for heavy claw. Similarly to the Spinosaurus, they both have long, narrow snouts that's perfect for fishing by the riverbank. They also sport the same pressure sensors found in modern crocodiles that allow them to detect movement of fish underwater. The Baryonyx also features a sharp dip near the snout that prevents prey from wriggling out of its grasp. The snout from Jurassic World is a lot more narrow than the real thing, looking a lot more like an alligator than it really was. Also, the Baryonyx had 96 teeth, which is a whole 36 more than the Tyrannosaurus rex which would have come in handy for trapping smaller fish instead of crushing bone like the T-Rexes. Whilst it's heavily debated which dinosaurs had feathers, it's heavily suggested that the Baryonyx, due to living in warm climates of what is now Spain and Africa, most likely didn't sport them. Whilst it is true that some types of feathers can be used to actually cool down larger animals in warm climates, there's been no evidence of any feathers or quills being found surrounding the fossils of this species, like you would in other dinosaurs, so any suggestions about it having feathers is purely speculation. Unlike the Spinosaurus, the Baryonyx was much better at living on land, with hind legs perfect for travelling great distances at greater speeds, shown by the many different locations this creature has been found in. Now, probably the most difficult area in trying to determine what a dinosaur really looked like is colour. The colour of skin unfortunately doesn't fossilise, but we can guess how it may have adapted to its environment by looking at modern-day birds and reptiles. 
Due to the Cretaceous period and location this creature was based around, we can loosely suggest the coloration this creature would have been. The desert sand of the Cretaceous period would have mostly consisted of browns and dark oranges, so to blend in, the Baryonyx would most likely have adapted a similar color scheme. The top half of the animal being light browns with even patches of orange or black, with the lower half being lighter and more beige. The difference in colour is found in many modern day animals and it's called countershading, and it lets the animal blend in easier and reduce shadows due to more light bouncing off the underbelly. The best example to use is in modern day reptiles found in similar desert environments. Snakes and lizards commonly feature brown skin towards the top half of their body with darker spots to help blend in, with countershaded underbellies, so similar adaptations may very well have been found in the Baryonyx. What's funny is that Universal made a concept for the Baryonyx that actually looked eerily close to what the creature may very well have looked like, as promotional material for the first Jurassic World, featuring the light brown to orange skin with colour differentiation underneath, the longer claws and a more sleek design making it more capable for swimming. But for Fallen Kingdom, they swiftly changed the design in favour of something that looked more traditionally Jurassic Park, more monster, less real. Of course, this video is all based on research and scientific theories, and we're all entitled to our own opinions. Remember that it's been 64 million years since the dinosaurs were all wiped from the Earth, so chances are we'll never know exactly what the Baryonyx really looked like. But from my perspective, this is probably the closest we'll get as of now. And who'd have thought that Jurassic Park would be the ones that give us the most accurate interpretation of the Baryonyx? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification button to become a resident today. What do you think about the Baryonyx? What dinosaurs should we look into next? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. I've been Alistair from Dangerville, and residents, thank you for watching.